consciousness returns in a wave as the last of the machine's energy dissipates. The calming of the storm reveals the sprawling city around you like sand wiped from a mosaic. You see the distant outline of Aethys raising his fist in triumph and purpose. You keep falling asleep on me, I'm gonna have to start walking behind you with a pillow. Oh, by the way, the storm's gone. Also, I think Aethys has ended the world. Adair takes a long draw from his pipe and nods as he stares at the Colossus in the distance. Yes, that's Aethys, that's a giant in the background. It seems we're all still here. So far. Do not touch the machine again, I say. <laughs> the delicate fish can only take so much. Squeezing his eyes shut, Takehu rests his head on his palm. God's darnation. My head. Shodi presses a palm to her brow as she struggles to her feet. Peering over the edge of the tower, you make out a distant shape amid the ruins below. A ragged ship has settled offshore where it lists at a drunken angle, the flag of the Principe drooping from the tilted mast. The empty deck tells that the surviving crew have long since boarded a skiff and rowed to shore, which means you are no longer alone on Ukaizo. Um... Sigh and draw your weapon. That's totally a thing. That's totally what I'm doing. Sigh and draw your weapon. Yep. Great. We're going to have to fight some pirates, yo. Um, What do we got here? What kind of things? Ooh, plus 100% healing done for 10 sec. Ooh, yeah. Let's level up that healing. Or we could get a skeleton. Nah, let's level up our healing. Oh, wait. Do we have guns? Let's get a pistol, I think. Remember to save? Okay, I'll save. I leveled people up. I'm leveling people up. And then we'll save. Okay, Shodi. We're level 20 now. What do we have? What do we have? What's this? Um, create a sphere of darkness. A priest calls upon Magrin AoE, but it's not faux AoE. And what's this one? Blinded. Um, blue bald loser, a dollar. One dollar. Let's just do tough. I don't even care. I don't even care. I don't even care. I don't even care. Okay. I see Saving. great potential in you, Shoti. Okay, I think that just going back down is the only way. Marvin, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for the continued support. Oh, can I not know go to Mogwidivi? Is the Grand Promenade the only place? I don't even know where I'm supposed to go right now. You. Tweedly deedly dee. I do have a floating head as my pet. It's true. I do. So now it comes to this. Oh. Tugging on the frilled cuffs. Um, Abby, welcome back for three months in a row. Thank you so, so much. Welcome. Um, blue bald loser, I uh, tend to think that when people ask, uh, like, I'll give you $1,000 or blah, 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 they mostly are lying. Um, if you want to give people money then you will give according to your ability and not and less according to their need um if someone genuinely came to me and was like how much money i will give you as much as you ask i'm a genie i have magic um my answer would probably be ten thousand dollars maybe 15 that would be really nice but that's you're not a genie you're a person and so you like asking me like i'll donate anything it's it's it sounds like bullshit is what it sounds like so that's why i said a dollar because it sounds like bullshit 
Anyway, Captain Ferrante. You think to steal my golden dream, but I will not allow it to happen. He embellishes an aristocratic bow as he draws arms against my you. My gratitude is yours for disabling the storms. It seems I did not require Rivan's ship to reach Yokaizo in the end. Um, really, you pirates are worse than cockroaches. The Principi have adapted. No, thrived for centuries. We survived the fall of the grandest empire Eora has ever known. Did you? You may slaughter us now and then, but you can never stop us. We will ransom, thief, and forge a future for our continued blood long after you are but dust. Shrug. Okay. Such memorable last words. Okay. Gorez, Casita. May your lungs fill so fully with blood that you choke even in hell. All right, well, let's fucking annihilate these guys. It should not be difficult. Stop flirting with the shark man at once. Don't tell me who to flirt with, console hot. I want to kill the priest. Did you know you reek of that hagfish you carry? Console hot is the worst. At once. You love really confident NPCs. It's so much more fun when you easily kill them. Yeah. Oh, Shody. Oh, Shody. Why don't you? Indignity will not go unanswered. Console hot is what you aspire to be. I believe in you. I think you can get there. Shody, stop it. Heal. There you go. Get dressed. My AI is off. My hair. Oh, that's why? I didn't know. This whole time? Mother of Pearl. Okay, that's why. I can't believe I won that last fight with my AI off. Maybe it was easier, even. That's why she was never shifting form, because the AI was off. Yep. Yep. That was very easy. All right, bye, Ferrante. Hi, chaotic good boy. How are you? I am live. And the wheel has ground you all to dust. Only I will remain. Okay. Let's go. Moe Gwith Gwith? Gwith? Moe Gwith? Anyone know how to pronounce that? The elf holds his grimoire like a clumsy you initiate. into the ancient winding streets of Ukaizo. Battered by storms for thousands of years, the ruins bear the marks of their role as the lone witnesses of the gods' great secret at the center of the city. The houses and boulevards are pierced by great spears of luminous Audra. There are no ashen bodies, no birds, no sign or sound of any life. But with every step, the rhythmic pounding in the distance draws near. Soon, you can feel the vibration traveling up your spine. Ah, shit. As you approach the center of the city, the weathered architecture gives way to more luminous Audra piercing the ruins, eventually overtaking them entirely. Cresting the top of a fallen tower, you finally get a clear view of Aethys. He stands, legs astride, 
next to a great stone monument ringed with eleven cavernous alcoves. All but three hold a gargantuan skeleton, bones scrubbed clean by the city's storms. I really hope I don't have to fight these giant skeletons. An immense anguithin machine floats above the monument, suspended by invisible energy emanating from a well of light beneath it. Great brass rings spin around a core of metal and Audra at the machine's center. Periodically, Aethys's massive arms swing back. The movement alone is enough to draw great gusts of wind toward him. When they come down on the machine, the impacts are accompanied by eruptions of electricity, fire, and smoke. The hundreds of luminous Audra pillars across Ukaizo sympathetically dim in a rippling wave that spreads out from the machine. The only safe route to the god is a steep ascent along a monstrous pillar of luminous Audra, intertwined with fragments of Ukaizo's ruins that it has carried through the centuries. The pillar bends in a long arc, towering above the machine. The pillar levels out near Aethys's head, a silent observer to the destruction of the machine it has grown beside over thousands of years. You weave your way along a treacherous, rain-slicked path up the pillar's skyward side. As you arrive at the top, you catch Aethys' attention. Fist pulled back, he pauses to observe you. With the same gentleness he showed at Ashen Maw. Can we seduce him? He lowers his arm and turns toward you. Okay, pillars of eternity to dead fire. Can we seduce the giant living statue? Yes? No? Maybe? Strange to see Okaizo in this way. From really high up? It may be hard to picture, but this city was once full of life. The Hawana, yes, but also kith from many other cultures. Great hanging trees shadowed these boulevards. <laughs> Gardens sprawled across the open rooftops. Each spring, a festival procession would wind its way from the hillside into this valley. And what happened? The celebrants would pass through a steep walk among the stalls of foreign merchants, flowers falling upon them from all sides. All people of all nations, together in a celebration of new life, such was the power and beauty of Lost Ukaizo. Okay. Mighty One, I once desired to return that power and beauty to the Juana. Now I wish only for the tribes to find it themselves. If not here, then elsewhere. C okay. Takehu glances at you and swallows. Was I wrong? Have I failed them? I, I don't... I don't know. Takehu. The gods have already decided so much of your life. I would not shape what remains of it. <laughs> Wanna get each other's rocks off? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You know how your people could benefit from your help. You have also come to see that this life is yours to live as you choose. Deciding what course to take is not easy. But if you do not choose, your life may pass you by as you stand at the crossroads. I mean, literally, it can't do that, though. This isn't right. You can't put this burden on us. You can't make the gods' problems our problems, our responsibility to fix. How can you have faith that what you're doing is good? You know how many people are going to suffer because of this. Yeah, what Adair said. No matter how you spin this, you can't set it straight. Yeah, because it's super gay. No, I don't know. I'm sorry. Adair, I'm so sorry. I wish I could explain it to you. It breaks my heart that I cannot. But no matter how much you curse me, do not despair. The souls of this world will need people like you. Lights burning brightly in the darkness to come. Ukazo's corpse is beautiful, my god. This, its current state, is but one spoke in the ever-turning wheel of life and death. And so no less worthy than its incarnation at birth. Shodi, please. 
But you seek to break that wheel. I beseech you, Gon, that when you do, you do it right. Burn to ash every Audra root in hell so that it may never regrow. Let the darkness reign eternal. Mother of God! Shoni, what the fuck? What did I do to you? Oh, God. Oh, God. It saddens me that the harvesting of souls in my name <laughs> has brought you to this place, Shoni. Oh, God. But I am the cause, and I must take responsibility for it. I can only hope that after I am gone, <laughs> you will see there is a brighter future for mortals. It is a future that you can help shape, even if you cannot see it now. Let the hate flow through you, Shoni. <laughs> what right do you have to do this? Destroy the wheel and leave us with nothing? Without even knowing what will come next? Oh, Aloth, we are all gods and mortals responsible for our own actions. Yeah, Aloth. But inaction carries its own moral responsibility. It is a burden I have carried for far too long. One must always do as their conscience dictates, even if that means abdicating a position of power. But you're not just abdicating a position of power. You are abdicating everyone's position of power. You're destroying the structures of power. You're literally breaking the wheel. But what of you, Watcher? Why have you uh, me? Have you come to bear witness to the breaking of the wheel? Um. Oh, I can be a shoddy. I've come to fight you. I've come to ask you to take pity on the mortals of this world who will suffer for your actions. Roll seduction, quick. Uh. Uh. Okay. What I've got a B6 seduction skill. One sec, and I, I have to get four or above. What do you think Aethys's will is? A six. How many forks do I have? Okay. Let me just. Let me just. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay, that's five, I'm, I'm just six, op 10, op 10. Let's just, let's see, let's see. I'm going to have, I have four forks. Yeah, I'll fork persuade. That's Alessandra's. Yeah, I don't, I don't, my seduction skill is not that good. Okay, all right, so I have a B6. I have a B6 in, in seduction, and I'm going to have four forks. You say it's an ob-10 test? Can I open-end it? At least? Okay. All right. Let's just... We'll see. Oh, that's not great. Okay. Uh, one, two, three... Four, five successes on ten dice. Only one six. Ah, fuck. I only got five successes, chat. He's, he's some, is he someone's husband? <laughs> I think that was enough. <laughs> I think that was enough of a diversion. I guess this is not impressed. No, he's not. Um, I think take pity on the people who will suffer because of your guilty conscience, you dick. I think that's the one. I don't want strong leader thing. Um, I... I don't know. They're gonna need a head start, so help us. I don't think that's a big... Like, like I, I don't want him to destroy it all. I don't want to just bear witness, and I don't want to fight him. So I think it's like, take pity on these motherfuckers. You're doing some fucking damage, bro. It is pity for mortals that drives me, Watcher. I have felt it in every step I have taken to cross the dead fire and reach this place. Yeah, because you're fucking killing a bunch of people. You've murdered so many. What more would you have me do? Um, think of the souls that will be trapped in the in-between for all that time. They'll be tormented until the wheel is fixed. There will be hundreds of thousands of souls trapped in between. They will be screaming out to me for help until the wheel is fixed. 
It will present a dilemma for animancers. Some may attempt to protect those souls instead of working on a solution for the wheel. Definitely not the animancers ones. Uh, I mean, is this like be self-centered? Like they're all gonna be screaming at me and that's annoying. Or is this like, they're gonna be, they're gonna be hurt and that sucks that they should be hurt. Uh, they'll be screaming out to me for help until the wheel for altruism. I think I'm going to go with number two. I'm going to be like, dude, just fucking like all of you gods have dragged me into your problems so many times. Thousands of people screaming at you like Twitch chat. I, the Twitch chat has, yep. Do this, watcher. Do that, watcher. Save, watcher. Press F5, watcher. I hope you did not expect me to take action for your sake alone. Don't be a dick, Aethys. Still, it is true. The souls trapped in the in-between will was kind suffer of a until selfish the wheel is restored. Answer. They will reach out for help to any watcher they can see. Thank you for making me think of the lost souls, watcher. I will provide a haven for them after my work here is finished. No, that's not. I must attend to my final work now. I don't. I cannot delay any longer. I wish I would have been like, yo, stop it. You have carried a heavy burden across the dead fire, Watcher. Before I go, I would rid you of it. I don't, I don't like this. No sooner have Aethys' words enter your mind than you hear one final dissonant ring of chime within you and then silence. The knot that formed when the Pallid Knight first addressed you in the beyond is now gone. You are free now. As free as any of us can be. I still have this stupid skull yelling at me. Many will come to you for help in the years ahead. Animancers, priests. You got some really big pores. The themselves. Do you need some skincare tips? Because I've been working on a new skincare regime myself, and I could probably help you out. I have great hope for you. But always remember that your future is for you to decide. Use your freedom well. Aethys squares himself to the machine. As you move to a safe distance, he draws his fist back okay. and resumes his assault. The blows rain down with increased fervor, but the machine perseveres in spite of his efforts. Spreading his arms wide, Aethys draws power from the luminous Audra clustered around the valley. The energy courses through his body. Bye, guys. See you later. Limbs overflowing with intense light and waves of heat. It's been fun. No more reincarnation for you. He returns to his task, each strike bringing with it the sound of cracking stone and twisting metal, the flickering of luminous Audra across Ukaizo. As the ancient machine finally begins to succumb to his strength, so too does Aethys's body, built to withstand the passage of thousands of years. The great Audra statue has finally been pushed beyond its limits. Cracks appear along the hands, then race up the arms. Aethys does not slow his assault, but continues unabated. Its brass rings twisted. The machine spins erratically, but withstands the relentless barrage. Aethys stands astride it and pummels the base of the machine. Soul energy begins to flare out from the machine's heart, warping the air with the intense heat. Aethys drives his right fist into the machine's center, the core of metal and Audra. The god lets out a deafening shout Something between a cry of anguish and a roar of exultation. You see Aethys's arm oh, shatter upward from his hand through his elbow. Ugh. A flash of light and heat bursts from the core, accompanied by a cacophony of destruction. The moment passes as Aethys's shout echoes throughout the valley. Your eyes begin to recover. The god's work is accomplished. The great machine of Ukaizo has been destroyed. 
the wheel has been unmade. That doesn't sound great. I didn't want that to happen, but he's a god, so. As Aethys's voice fades, the enormity of what you've accomplished sinks in. You have confronted a god. You have rediscovered the ancient city where the wheel was forged, and you have seen the wheel shattered. What comes next is uncertain, but already the legend spreads of the Watcher who survived Andra's mortar and stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aethys. Maras Nua's body finally goes still amidst the rubble of the ink within machines, yet it continues to glow. Priests and mystics have strange dreams of an island of eternal dawn at the eye of a storm, a port where the tide never flows out, a roadside tavern whose door leads only inward. Oh, look, his arm's broken. As a watcher, you see what these dreamers cannot. The souls of the departed drifting toward the Audra Colossus and the twilight afterlife within. Whether it is a temporary haven or a permanent end will depend on what the kith of Aeora are able to accomplish on their own. Okay, so instead of going to the in-between, all of the souls of Aeora are just going to live in this giant statue of living Audra? The greatest hope seems to lie in the work of the ancient Anguithans and the Juana's efforts to unearth and understand it. Yeah, go Juana! And while Maras Nua stands frozen over Ukaizo, the gods look on the labors of Kith, but they do not intervene. They watch and argue, wager and conjecture at how or whether mortals will solve the puzzle set before them. Reclaiming Ukaizo is both a symbolic and a practical victory for the Hawana. Yeah, Hawana! The ancient city is a potent reminder of their people's ancient glory, and it promises to be a much more easily defensible capital, especially with the storm controls of Andra Spire close at hand. The other tribes unite under the Kahanga and dedicate themselves to rebuilding Ukaizo and relearning its secrets. That's positive. That is a positive thing. The Valian Trading Company continues its operations in Deadfire, though it is forced to renegotiate many of its contracts with the newly empowered Juana Crown. Company leadership finds that the new terms are much more favorable to the tribes than to their own interests in the region. As it should be. Due to these changes, the Valian Trading Company eventually withdraws most of its people from Deadfire. Yes. That's what I wanted. The Royal Deadfire Company is allowed to continue trading in the archipelago, though they are forced to submit most of their outposts and fortifications to Huana leadership. The storms across the Rawatayan mainland subside along with those of Andra's mortar. However, Rawatai regards this respite with a wary eye ever mindful that the machinery at Andra Spire remains under their foe's control. Well, I mean, so one of the reasons why the Rawatayans couldn't make a living and couldn't grow crops on their own land was because of these storms. So, like, they don't need to be as present in the dead fire now that the storms aren't ravaging their mainland, right? So that's fine, whatever. The battle at Andra's mortar leaves the fleet of the Principi Sen Petrena in shambles. Thus sundered, they fight among each other until they are little more than squabbling bands of pirates. Yeah, okay, I'm into they it. They continue to harass unguarded merchant vessels, but they are fit for little more. Gone are the dreams of empire and the hunger for primacy. So these are all the results of me siding with the Juana and the fa faction quest lines? Despite other tensions across the archipelago, Port Maget remains a model of peaceful, productive cooperation between the Juana and the Valian Trading Company. Though they do not always agree, Governor Clario and Storm Speaker Ikawa work together for the mutual benefit of their people. I honestly don't remember what choices we made on this island, but... As the balance of power changes in Deadfire, so too does Nekataka transform. Okay, in what way? Though the Kahanga monarchy moves its new seat of government to Ukaizo, Nekataka continues to be a busy and important city. The Kahanga leadership takes responsibility for the welfare of the Republic. What? And the gullet starts to improve. Yay! What was once a den of crime, poverty, and illness slowly becomes a quiet haven for the Republic. Okay, this sounds like a really good end. Ukaizo reveals more about the ancient art of water shaping than the guild could have hoped to learn in another century of work. 
With this new knowledge, water shapers across the archipelago wield the currents and bend the waves for the pleasure and benefit of the new Juana nation. Your brief encounter with Letharn proves deeply influential for the children of the Dawnstars. Who is that guy again? Plagued with nightmares and haunted by the deaths at Hesongo, Letharn begins questioning his faith in Aethys. At first, his fellow Dawnstars chide him. But that changes as word of Aethys' deeds at Ukaizo spreads. After all, what business have they worshipping a god who denied his own legitimacy? Okay, so what's this about? The children of the Dawnstars respond to Aethys' sacrifice by taking up the lanterns and sickles of the Harvesters of Gaon. They become pilgrims of essence, gathering souls across Aeora and ferrying them to the haven within the Audra Colossus. Okay. Others will repair or rebuild the wheel one day. In the meantime, the Dawn Stars will care for the souls of the dead. That's not bad. That's not horrible. Ruanu, the chieftain of the Juana at Tikawara, dies mysteriously. Weird. The tribe finds his body washed up on the same beach where Anaharu challenged him to the trial of waves. Some blame Anaharu's vengeful spirit. That was Bairn. As in uh, final judgment. And a few speak of a strange man seen lingering in the village. Uh, who killed this guy? The leaderless tribe eventually scatters. Some head to Nekataka, while others seek out the Wahaki. That's fine. The island didn't have any resources on it. It can go back to those, like, little lizard guys. Though your adventures alter the destiny of Aora and the balance of power in Deadfire. Oh yeah, let's see what happens to the also leave a lasting mark on those who travel at your side. Your companions find themselves changed in ways both big and small. Please don't hate me forever. Adair returns to Hisongo, where he reunites with Burn, the son of his former lover, Alava. The boy takes Aww. heart in Adair's account that Aethys and all the other gods were false, petty, and unworthy of the love of Kith. Realizing how close he came to dying for this cause, Burn finds renewed purpose in working alongside his uncle to repair the many scars left upon Deadfire by the gods. Under Adair's guidance, Burn grows into the kind of a reverent, stubborn hothead that would have made his mother proud. And Adair visits her gravesite, often to tell her so. Okay, so Adair's, like, epilogue is basically that he goes to hang out with this kid that he thought might be his kid but wasn't his kid? That's boring and stupid. Shodi is not a priestess who understands the meaning of subtlety. As such... She makes her girlish crush on Adair painfully obvious from the moment she first sets eyes on the strapping father. Uh, uh, Early in your travels, Adair appears discomforted by her persistent flirting. He often grimaces when she sidles up to him, and he takes endless pains to keep their conversations terse and to the point. Yeah, fuck her. Don't fuck her. But after a little smoothing Not on fuck your her. to nudge them in the right direction. No fucking. Adair makes an effort to view Shodi with an open mind. And Shodi begins teasing the veteran fighter in a more companionable and less amorous manner. Yeah, no fucking. None, after none of that. After each other's hides a couple times and sharing more than a few laughs, the two form an easy and you suspect lifelong friendship. I don't care about your friendship. Plagued by constant nightmares and hallucinations, <laughs> Shodi becomes increasingly disassociated from reality. Meanwhile, her power continues to grow with every soul she harvests. You start to notice sliced up animal corpses everywhere you two travel. But when confronted about it, Shodi stomps her feet and fiercely denies any wrongdoing. Then, one night, Shodi wakes, but never leaves the nightmare. Shivering uncontrollably, she packs up her belongings and slips away into the darkness, murmuring that she must return to the Temple of Gone in order to fulfill her purpose to her god. But she never reaches the temple. None of the Dawn Stars know what's become of her, aside from disturbing rumors of a harvester ravaging the southeastern islands in the dead fire, leaving a trail of blood in her wake. Shodi turns into a mass murderer. Good. 
Excellent. If Alnoth has learned one thing from your adventures, it is that the forces shaping the world are vaster and more complex than he had ever imagined. And they are far beyond anyone's power to control. I mean, okay, when we first started playing, I hated Shodi, so breaking her is not, I'm not sad. I'm not sad. Thus, it is with great relief that he abandons his labors against the Leaden Key. Without Theus at the helm, it will crumble in its own time. The best he can do is stand back and allow it to happen. You let Romaro go. That was it? And the former pirate ostensibly set sail Seriously? for the trade lanes of the Eastern Reach. The Edier Empire, Old Valia, and the Republics. For the remainder of your time together, Seraphin seems, if not exactly happy, at least contented with the outcome of your confrontation with his former mentor at Sayuka. And yet, when the two of you part, Seraphin seems emboldened, invigorated by a new sense of purpose. He buys you a drink, toasts to the dead fire, says, let's see if we can make something worth a shit out of what's left of these Principe swabs and sets sail the next morning. Okay. In the years to follow, rumors occasionally reach you of the Blue Orlan Pirate of the Dead Fire, a privateer captain as keen to free Aww, slaves, he became a captain. a fight for an influence as he is to plunder and pillage. I mean, that's good. I think that's a good ending for Seraphin. For assisting the Watcher with the Juana Conquest of Ukaizo, Palagina is immediately dismissed from the Brotherhood. Oh no. With no friends left among the Valian trading company. Oh no. Palagina is banished from the Republics. Seen as a Valian by the Juana and an outcast by her own people, she finds the dead fire cold and unwelcoming. Oh no. Spirit broken, she eventually boards a ship bound for Defiance Bay and is not heard from again. I'm so sorry, Palagina. I'm so sorry. Pleased with the Navy's conduct throughout the Dead Fire campaign, Maya returns to active duty. She can find a free drink and a sharp salute anywhere she goes in Rawatayan territory. In recognition of her performance, the Navy attempts to give Maya less strenuous work. She flatly refuses, throwing herself into the fray whenever she can. Her rifle never has time to cool. Okay, I don't care. She was a spy. I wish Palagina had gotten a better deal, but no, let's give Maya the good deal and not Palagina, my love. She looks forward to seeing her brother again. So does Ashiza. I don't care about your stupid bird. Takei who distances himself yeah. from the problems of the dead fire, giving the tribes a reprieve from godlike omens. Ngati's silence speaks volumes. The Juana grow to rely on each other paving a new way forward divorced from their traditions. Soon after his departure from Nekataka, sailors report of mountainous water sculptures rising from the open sea, entrancing and salacious. These works are celebrated everywhere, from the brothel to the palace. Entrancing and though salacious? Though the identity of the artist remains an open question. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. All right. As your paths diverge, Takehu leaves you with a protracted and energetic farewell. He has work to do in the we dead We do fire, it. But his heart, and he insists the rest of him, is yours. You make promises Fish to see boy. each other again on different shores. Your pursuit of Aethys and your journey to Ukaizo signal the end of forces that have shaped the lives of Kith and the course of nations. The cycle Oops. of reincarnation has been broken. The storms of Andra's mortar have calmed. Yet each ending promises a new beginning. As the sun rises over Ukaizo, Kith turn their gaze eastward, wondering at what lies beyond, and at the world they will fashion for themselves. No! No, there are not new statues of water statues of my character all over the place. That's a no. As the watcher of Cadnua and the former herald of Bereth. I just go back to Cadnua <laughs> and begin the long journey home. You hope for calm weather. Can you imagine like we sailed all over the Deadfire. We got a bunch of its people on our crew. 
We made allegiances with or enemies of every like establishment that existed in the dead fire. And then after all of this garbage, we just go home. I mean, yeah, I guess, but also like, let's go back to our shattered castle. That doesn't, I don't know. Shouldn't like the queen, like give us some like land or something. Shouldn't I get something cool for, I guess I did destroy the cycle of reincarnation. You feel like the main story is the weakest part of Pillars 2? The second thing is by going down a seduction path with one of the characters, did I make it so that I couldn't go down that path with the other characters? Could I have seduced Aloth or Adair instead, but I just chose Takehu too early? Actually, my game uh, bugged and I didn't have the baby Orlin, um, even though I did take her. So, yeah, that seems kind of underwhelming. A little bit underwhelming. I really liked the gameplay. I really enjoyed the, like, audio and visual design. Um, but I feel like, yeah, I, I had more fun exploring the world than I did with the main quest line of um, talking to Aethys. Like, that was always secondary. I loved the stuff with the Juana and the Royal Deadfire Company and, like, the Principe and all that stuff was really cool. It's more of a story about the world and less the main character, which is weird for an RPG like this. Yeah, a lot of these things, a lot of these RPGs, I mean, it has the classic, like, you're blessed by the gods and you're the only person who can do this massive quest sort of thing that's very classic with stories like this because why are you the main character? There's got to be a reason for it. Um, but yeah, weird. You can't get with Adair at all, but you could get with Aloth, and I blew it. You're, uh, you thought it was a bit short, and you were 100% Team Aethys, so that was anticlimactic. Yeah, is there a way to get him to not break the wheel? Is that a thing that you can do? Hey, voice direction, additional voice direction. Narrator, Pike, Edwin, Vexalia, Shodi. She's really Jody. That's so weird. I didn't think that she was Shodi. Wait, wait, I wanna go back. Can I go back? One sec, one sec. Modwer talking, okay. Okay. So, Seraphin was Liam, yeah, yeah, yeah. Marisha was Maya. Welcome back for eight months, the perfect apple. Matt was Aloth and Dare. And Gilmore, I guess, is one of the ones you can download. Sam was Bairn, the Imp Voices. Demnok the, Devour Nemnok, the Devourer. Who is this? Nemnok? Rekka? Okay, so he was that weird, like, one that didn't speak. And Sky... And the Dragon? Okay. So does he not voice? Is there not a... Uh, is there not a... Um, What's Sam's, Sam's character name? I, I some, somehow forgot it. Nemnok was great? I don't, did we, who's Nemnok? You can scroll the credits. Uh, Travis is Takehu. Talison is Aethys. Um, this is Allegra Clark is Modwer. Uh, I don't know who these people are. I'm just trying to see if there's anyone else that I know. Do, do, do. I feel like there's so many voice actors in a game like this. It's crazy. There's a giant imp who gives a side quest to bring him spell books. Oh, I guess I just didn't get that one. So many voice actors in a game like this. Scanlan, yeah, is there not Scanlan in the, um, 
uh, critical role things because it didn't list Scanlan. Allegra Clark was Josephine in Dragon Age Inquisition. I haven't played any Dragon Age game, no. Other in one, other in two. Those are my favorite songs. <laughs> Sea shanties. Dead fire line was an arrangement of the black ball line. Faithful sailor. Holloway and go instead of Holloway Joe. Heave away my Lendry instead of my Johnny. Roll the old Barris wheel instead of roll the old cha chariot. That's really cool. They just like rewrote actual sea shanties. Apparently there is no way to prevent Aethys from destroying the wheel. Well, that's kind of shitty because the end will always it always is it's always the same you always say this destroys the wheel nah. not I'm not sure about that hi Jack you're late which of the Elder Scrolls games have you played only Skyrim Well, this has been fun. Let's just uh, look at all those QA testers. Ah. And here's the Kickstarter people. Good job, you guys. Thanks for kickstarting this game. You did it. I'm proud of you. If your name is in here, go you. You you did it. God, that's a ton of Kickstarter back back backers. Wow. All right, we did it. That's a thing, we finished the game. I'm so proud. I knew it, we were gonna do it, but I honestly thought that it was gonna take more than one try to defeat the dragon. <laughs> I don't know, I like. I thought it was gonna be like a, a, a bunch, cause Theos was really hard, but like, I, I swear I didn't change the difficulty. Uh, let me, let me just like see if I can check on the difficulty for you because like I want you to know I did not change the difficulty because I know that someone. Strange to see you Kaizo in this way. I don't, okay. It may be hard to picture. I am, I, I, But I'm, this city was once full of life. Never mind. I'm sorry, uh, this isn't what is I wanted. You, you, many, I, Get me out of here! Maras knew his body knew his finally body. as of the and while re the v dude the no! the Stop! Alt F4! <laughs> I didn't, that's not what I wanted. 